Well, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, I'm Ryota Dohi. Um, I'm a type designer from Monotype Japan. And today, I would like to talk about a seismic shift that happened in the type design field in the 1970s Japan. It was almost like a paradigm shift. The legendary type designer, Mr. Yukihiro Nakamura, shown here, is responsible for this change. I would like to talk about how this paradigm shift occurred by introducing Mr. Nakamura and his work. He created two very important fonts called Naru and Gona. Naru is a rounded sensory font released in 1973, shown on the top, and Gona is a sensory font released in 1975, shown on the bottom. Before telling you more about these two fonts, Naru and Gona, uh, let me show you that they are still around us, even though they were designed almost half a century ago. Here is one example of Naru. This is a road sign, and this is Gona found inside Tokyo Station. You might have even seen these signs without knowing that they were Naru or Gona. This is Gona found in, uh, found in Hong Kong. So why did I become so interested in Mr. Nakamura and his Naru and Gona? Well, as I began my career as a type designer, I faced the challenge of creating new sensory fonts. Because we have various sounds in Japan, I needed some inspiration. So um, I thought that one way to get some inspiration might be to learn more about the history of how sensory fonts have de developed in Japan. As I began my research, I decided to learn more about the, about the two famous fonts, Naru and Gona, by contacting the creator, Mr. Nakamura. He was gracious enough to grant me several interviews. My presentation today is based on these interviews conducted in his studio in 2018 and 2019. These two fonts have changed the world of type designers so much that it wouldn't be an exaggeration if I told you that I might not be here talking to all of you like this today if it were not for this seismic shift. As I talk more about these two fonts, I hope that the reason why I say this will become clear. His fonts are not digitized, so though influential, not many young designers today in Japan and the rest of the world are familiar with his Naru and Gona. I would like to, today I would like to focus on three main reasons why I think Mr. Nakamura's contribution was so significant and why I think uh, we should pay more attention for, to his Naru and Gona. First, his design was innovative and ingenious. Second, his fonts changed the process of typesetting in Japan. And finally, his Naru and Gona introduced a new category term Okay, first, I'd like to give you an overview of the type design field uh, in the 60s and 70s Japan, which gave rise to these two fonts, Naru and Gona. In the mid to late 1900s, a phototype setting machinery manufacturer, Shaken, dominated the Japanese type design industry. Many well known type designers who are active today began their careers at Shaken. In 1970, Shaken held a type design competition. It was open to public. This, was, this fact that it was open to public was Shaken's first such attempt, and it proved to be an impetus for what is to come. Mr. Nakamura was an illustrator at the time, and he found out this competition and decided to enter. He entered Naru. This is the draft he did for the competition. And this is what he submitted. He drew all of this by hand. Of course, since there were no computers back then, he ended up winning for a surprise, prompting Shaken to offer him a contract to work as a freelance type designer. Three years later, in 1973, Naru was released to public. Since its release, Mr. Nakamura and Shaken expanded at Naru to a family of nine variations. So why did Naru receive first surprise? One answer is that Naru was nothing like any existing designs. 
let me show you what some of the existing designs look like. As you can see, humanist sans serif font or hand-drawn letters or serif fonts, which we call mincho, are used here, but there are no fonts here resembling Nadu. What are the differences between the 60s font and Nadu? First, it's the thickness, and second, it's the size of the letters themselves. Keeping these factors in mind, let's see how Mr. Nakamura created, created Nadu. He used to work at the TV station as a caption designer, and he designed captions for TV screen using rounded sound serif. He adapted this rounded sound serif design for Nadu. To further explain the creative process of Nadu, I need to pause here a little and explain one of uh, some of the basic characteristic, uh, characteristics of Japanese typesetting. Each Japanese letter has to be drawn in an M square, as, as many of you are already familiar, and set either vertically, like the one on the left, or horizontally, on the right, like the one on the right. Depending on the shape, depending on the shape of the letter, extra spaces are created on both sides of the letter. For example, things shaped hiragana letters like li on the left or u on the right tend to create such extra spaces. There are two preliminary stages of typesetting. When a designer sets the text without changing or, or adjusting the spacing the M square, it's called solid setting or betagumi in Japanese. It's on the top. And when a designer sets the text propor proportionally, like the one on the bottom, it's called proportional setting, or tsumegumi in Japanese. Today, thanks to digital technology, we are now able to control spacing and kerning simply by tapping on the keyboard using applications such as InDesign or Illustrator. But 40 to 50 years ago, this was not the case. So for the proportional setting, typesetters and designers had to manually adjust the spacing between each letter by cutting and pasting each letter in order for the end result to appear proportionally. Here are a couple of pictures to, to show this process. First, here is a picture of a typesetter separating each letter with a pair of scissors. Next, he is pasting each piece onto a sheet of paper. Mr. Nakamura wanted to free himself from having to manually adjust the kerning and, and, kerning and spacing as a result, he created Nadu. It was a new, modern, and innovative font. Many designers who worked with Japanese letters jumped on the opportunity to use it when it was first released. Now, let us compare Nadu and another typeface called Ishii Rounded Gothic. On the top is Ishii Rounded Gothic, which was widely used back in the 60s. And below is Nadu. As you can see, the body size of Nadu is enlarged to fit the M square. So Nadu has larger counters and larger body size compared to Ishii rounded Gothic. For Nadu, because both body size and counters are larger, each letter takes up most of the M square, so there is little space left around the letter. This means that type Typesetters and designers no longer need to adjust the spacing manually, making this part of the work much easier to handle. As is the case with all type designers around the world, many, many Japanese designers, type designers have always struggled with the question of how to balance various elements of typeface design, such as appearance, newness, and readability. Mr. Nakamura was no exception. He struggled to create something new and beautiful, but also practical. He succeeded in putting together all these important elements in his Nadu. As a result, Nadu transformed the field of type design in Japan because no one had created such a font before. This is why I call the introduction of Nadu a kind of seismic shift. Now, let's move from Nadu to Kona another very important font created by Mr. Nakamura. In 1972, 
Shaken asked Mr. Nakamura to create a sans serif font. They requested that he make it as thick as possible. The result was Gona. As was the case with Naru, it turned out to be nothing like any existing, existing fonts. Today, Gona has been expanded to a family of 12 variations by Mr. Nakamura and Shaken. There were many reasons why Gona was also different from other existing fonts. Today, I'd like to mention three main features of Gona. First is the stroke thickness. And the second, um, sorry, the first is the stroke thickness. Gona became much thicker than the thickest sans serif font that existed then. And the second is that is the treatment of terminals of each stroke, which was much simpler than the existing ones. Finally, the skeleton of Gona was very different from others. Let's compare Gona to Ishii Gothic. Ishii Gothic was one of the most famous humanist sans serif fonts in the 60s. At that time, when designers talked about the sans serif font, Many of them understood that they were referring to a humanist sans serif font, such as Ishii Gothic. On the top is Ishii Gothic, and below is Gona. Gona has a geometric skeleton and simple terminals, unlike Ishii Gothic. Now, please look at the counters. When we create a very thick font, we must make sure that the blackness of the whole letter does not dominate. So we need to pay close attention when adjusting the balance between the counters and each stroke. This is especially true with kanji or Chinese characters. Well-adjusted balance between the blackness and the counters gives the word or sentence a very solid appearance. This increases the sense of the presence of the word and sentences. This solid appearance has made Gona one of the most, one of the favorite headline fonts are for many designers. You might recall that Mr. Nakamura's experience as a caption designer at a TV station influenced the creation of Naru. In fact, we can say the same for Gona. Caption designers had to produce their work on time, so they had to be time efficient. To do so, they drew all the horizontal lines first while paying attention to the balance between the counters and horizontal lines. After all the horizontal lines were drawn, they drew the rest of the lines, as you can see on the screen. Mr. Nakamura told me that at the TV station as a caption designer, he acquired the skill of being able to imagine how the, balance, how the counters would look in the end as he drew, in the, he drew the horizontals horizontal lines in quick succession. The three features that I just mentioned, thickness, treatment of terminals, and the skeleton helped make Gona the first modern geometric sans serif font that succeeded commercially in Japan. Finally, I'd like to talk about how Naru and Gona have affected the type design industry in Japan as a whole. As I mentioned earlier, both, both the typesetting process and type design were affected by the introduction of Naru and Gona. Naru and Gona helped release typesetters from having to manually adjust, manually cut and paste during the proportional typesetting stage. As you can see on the screen, Naru and Gona inspired the creation of a number of new sans serif fonts that are now called modern sans serif fonts. Before the introduction of Naru and Gona, designers used only two category terms, sans serif and rounded sans serif, when talking about sans serif fonts. But, but with the introduction of Naru and Gona, a new category term, and term entered the designer's terminology. Now, fonts with large counters and geometric shapes like Naru, Go, Naru or Gona are called modern sans serif fonts. And many of the fonts that existed before Naru and Gona are now referred to as old style fonts. What do you see on your old style sans serif fonts? Sorry. What do you see on the screen? The screen are images of overlapping such fonts, um, modern sans serif fonts on the left, and old style sans serif fonts on the right. In retrospect, 
the fact that Shaken invited Shaken decided to have the competition, inviting the public to participate, was one of the turning points in the history of Japanese type design, in that the competition made it possible for Mr. Nakamura to be introduced to the to the type design field for the first time. Earlier in my presentation, we look at some examples of NAR and Agona that we could still see around us. Let me show you a couple more examples. This time, the examples are a sign that you can see on your way back from this venue to either Tokyo International Cruise Terminal Station or Telecom Center Station. These are pictures showing two road signs. This one, the one on the left is near Tokyo International Cruise Terminal Station, and the one on the right is near Telecom Center Station. You can find it after this talk, after the keynote talk. Yeah, but the, it's already dark, but you can see. <laughs> as, as part of my concluding remarks, I would very much like to share with you some of the things Mr. Nakamura has said that have left lasting impressions on me. As we all know, we use the computer to create letters now, but back when Mr. Nakamura was working on his Naru and Gona, he of course did everything by hand as I've mentioned earlier, that the direct tactical experience of creating letters using one hand was one of the most integral parts of his creative process. In a magazine interview he did in 1995, Mr. Nakamura said, in essence, that he creates letters with passion, energy, and inspiration. In other words, he pours his soul, as it were, into his work, he said that this process is daunting both physically and mentally, but he also said that he enjoyed this creative process immensely. He also told me that he believes that regardless of whether he did the work entirely by hand or on the computer, the passion and energy he pours into his work will reach those who see and use his fonts. To summarize, First, Nar and Gona changed the preconceived idea of what sans serif fonts were in Japan. And second, they gave us Japanese type designers wider options of sans serif fonts to choose from when, design, when designing fonts. Though the usage of Naru is not as intense now as it was when they were first released, they are still alive and well today, especially in places such as at train stations, at as we saw in the pictures earlier. These signs at train station and train station that endure because the signs themselves do not go through frequent changes. The fact that they are there for years means that many, many people see them both frequently and for a long period of time. So people become familiar with these fonts. Thanks to Mr. Nakamura who has produced high quality innovative fonts and of course other predecessors before and after him. The status of our profession in Japan is firmly established today. And this is why I said in my introduction that I might not be here being able to give a presentation before you like this if it were not for Mr. Nakamura. Thank you very much.